when creating topographical maps, using symbology is an important part of it because we are really trying to represent these different aspects of nominal data. Uh, so we want to work with how we make our symbologies clearly um, and we are typically have many details we want to include. So thinking about how one which symbols one uses in, in the topographical map is a very important aspect of the design. Choosing which colors um, and some simple character that you're going to use um, is important. When working with uh, point symbols, so if you have objects that are too small to represent, we should be having some form of symbol uh, representing it. Um, there are basically three categories of symbols one can choose between. You can see it as a planet from seen from above, a profile symbol, or a function symbol. So we have bicycle running or bathing, we have windmills, trees, or we have the shape of the church from above or whatever. So these are these classical different types of symbols that we use when we use point symboling. Line symbols are a bit more um, complex because there we want to have both the visual line giving the location of it and then we want to add some symbology to that line. Um, some classic examples would be a railroad where we have a single line so that's the black line and then we added some cross markers so if you added some point markers this creates this short lines that go uh, across the top there and then the single the output symbol is the combination of the two another little thing is that how do we create these classical black lines on roads well, the approach is that we have a two line symbol where we have a thick black line and then on top of that you'll have a thinner line in white or yellow or red depending on the road type. So these are some of those classical line symbols that we can use. If we look on how this is done in QGIS, I have some different layers, I have cemeteries, um, roads and um, trees. So let's try and show how we symbolize these elements. Um, first of all we know that, let's turn this for a moment, that some of these roads are double or three lines here. And that's because we have a road is, a, one the center line here is the road and then we have two cycle paths. So if this one for this purpose we want to get rid of our paths so I just make a quick filter on my road networks so I go in under general tab and I'll go down and do a filter on it where a road type um, fix that one uh, different from uh, a cycle path along a road. Okay, so hopefully you can see that those double lines disappeared there from our um, road network. We now have uh, different types of uh, of um, roads here. We might just as well go in and give them different symbologies, categories and we use this uh, road class, I think I'll take that one this time uh, classify, um, like that and um, if I now want to give them different symbols here so we go in and take these uh, wide roads three, uh, more than six meter roads and I will just give them a strange color so we can see them where they are. Oops, not that, sorry. Um, apply. So, got those there. And what we'll do if you're going to make a classical road symbol on those is that we'll have them as a simple line and we'll make this one more back 
relatively thick and then we'll add a new run which we'll, can, which we'll make uh, uh, Um, like that, find a yellowy colour we like. Yeah. Um, and increase it like that. So, all of these roads will now have a black line with a yellow, uh, oh sorry, uh, a yellow line with a that outline and we can then take the roads here and just make them simple uh, black um, I think also there's those there just make them black also so we now have the primary roads with this double symbol and the secondary roads as simple black lines the paths here um, are primarily inside the cemetery, so we might want to indicate that they are places where one could walk. So uh, we will probably want to have them as uh, nice and green as bases, and then we will add a new layer to them, which will be a marker line. And our marker will be a SVG marker. So what we've done here is we've made marker lines. <coughs> there are two elements in the marker line. Uh, here says dispersal of them, and then we have the marker itself. What is mark the marker going to be? And we'll see if we can find a little walking man somewhere. Oh, going the wrong way. Uh, okay, people go for roller skating here, so we'll have roller skate symbols on it here. <clears throat> so now you can see that the composite symbol will be a green line for small roller skate men on them. We can increase the size of the roller skate man. <clears throat> and we will probably want to, uh, in the marker here, increase the intervals a bit so they're not so close together. Something like that. So we'll say OK and apply. So now we have our paths indicated with um, small roller skip men on them as an element. And finally, we can uh, look at how our trees are symbolized. So we can look at our tree. It has a symbol symbol, <coughs> which we do not want to use. We're going to change it again to SVG. SVG is the basis of most of these things. And we can then find some form of tree like that. And increase it a bit size and give it a nice color uh, I don't want to do that uh, let's choose that color and I yeah that's fine so now we have all our small green trees uh, symbolized as trees also so when we create line symbols Point symbols, point symbols is typically just a single symbol. We could also have included a additional background symbol or something like that to make a composite uh, point symbol. But typically points are single and typically SVG as a symbol. Line symbols are typically composite where we maintain the line and then add symbols as the roller skate man on top of the line. Or if in typically the classical road where we have a double line symbol where we have a thick background that will give us that black outline and then we'll have a yellow white red center line so those are some of those 
classical road symbologies that we use when creating topographical maps. If we look at our area symbols, they are a wee bit more complex, but still the same principle is that we have multiple layers of symbology that we will add. So if I look at my churchyards here, we can then say, okay, first of all, it has a collar and a, um, a edge. In its classical version, uh, we have our fill, and we might say the churchyards would be a bit more greeny, uh, and it has a boundary edge. And there are different approaches to doing this. One could be to make it a darker shade of the same color. Black often is a bit too harsh um, to have. So often one chooses to have a darker shade of um, the same color. So a dark green edge or dark blue edge to the blue lake, dark green to the cemetery. You could also do really advanced things that sometimes, look, they won't be good in this case, but we can use one of these um, shape bursts and then set them to a from a darker edge uh, increase the saturation a bit and do it a bit darker like that something like that and we can then say that it shouldn't do it so far we just do it free and apply. So here we get a bit more subtle dark edge around it. A different approaches. And then we want to add some symbolic. What is it a park? Is it what is it? Is it a sports area? We want to indicate that this is a green area, but we want to say what type of green area. And typically in areas we use the color to make the main type and then we add symbology on top of that to subtype them. So in this case I would add a, a point pattern and my again here the pattern itself that gives where are the dots, how close are they, how they're dispersed and then they have a marker and I can change that marker to a SVG marker and see if I can find something that indicates a Christian churchyard like that so now we have our little cross um, make it a bit larger that like let me go up into this point pattern here where we can control how close they are so we we'll probably need them a bit closer than like that So now it's beginning to come into, I was decreasing these distances like that. If I just say apply to this, they come in a regular pattern, which typically doesn't look nice. What we can do is that we can then give a, a displacement, vertical and a horizontal displacement, oh, sorry, a horizontal and then a vertical. <clears throat> we, so we get something that has a less obvious pattern to it. Um, and we all have to fiddle around making these look um, without well, having too much conflicts with our roads and things like that in it. But still, we have here an example where we have used the area. We have... Um, worked about having to have area and the boundary on it and we have given it a color and then we used the symbology to add subtypes. Say this is a green air but it's a special type of green air that we call a churchyard. So that was basically the steps in using multi-layer symbology in uh, QGIS.